You know, St. John of the Cross in the 16th century, he said this, God can be loved, but not thought. Think about that. If the historic church just embraced that, more than embracing the thoughts of imperial power, uh, human-made doctrines and creeds as litmus tests of faith, think of all the divisions we would have avoided. Think of all the othering and exclusion of people we would have avoided. If we just embraced God can be loved but not thought. Listen, here's what I've discovered in my own life. The story of any relationship, whether it's spiritual or human, that story is always unknown. When you begin any relationship, what's ahead is unknown, what's ahead is unmade, right? That's what was true for Joseph and Mary's story. That is what is true for all of our stories. But in that unknownness, in that unmadeness, this is where it moves us to relating to God. Welcome the cloud of unknowing in your faith. Actually, welcome an unmade faith. Welcome an uncertain faith. Listen, if you and I don't welcome this whole idea that the cloud of unknowing is an actual healthy thing, part of our faith, what might happen is you're actually going to accidentally create something and you didn't even mean to create it, but you're going to actually create a faith that thirsts and needs assurance and promises. So maybe it'll be drawn to the black and white. Maybe it'll be drawn to literalism. Maybe it'll be drawn uh, to fundamentalism. Why? Because this thirst can only be quenched by this desperate need of security and assurance. And do you know what that does? The result of that, it, you end up building a life in faith that's built on fear. It, it's like all these big pharma commercials that come on while we're watching television at night that talk about the latest, greatest pill to take and its side effects. It's like, is your spiritual life uncertain? Then take Certigen to clear up this rashy unknownness and be secure. Side effects are fear, anxiety, insecurity, and bloating. And if you continue to have terror and dread, do not consult a biblicistic clergy because they will prescribe to you the same dopey drug all so you keep coming back because of your fear. But if part of your faith is actually the wonder of the unknown, then that will create a life of aliveness and awareness and creativity. It will create, this cloud of unknow, uh, unknowing will create a faith that leads you to relating to God. That's what leads you home. Listen, folks, here's what we know about the brain. When your brain rejects uncertainty, do you know what the brain does? It is wired to create stories that assume the worst. All for this ironic goal of keeping you safe. To the human thought, if the brain doesn't know what's around the corner, in order to keep you safe, it's going to assume the worst can happen to you. It's going to over-personalize the threat. It's going to sh jump to some untested conclusion. The brain is wired to not be uncertain, and it's wired to be certain. Did you know that studies show the brain would rather experience physical pain than have to endure uncertainty. But life and faith, it's all uncertain. To embrace this cloud of unknowing, to, to just surrender to it, as hard as it may be, I believe this is where the magic happens. If, if we already know what we want, if we've decided that, then we've already put a box around ourselves. We've already set limitations for ourselves. But when you allow for the unknown, you move towards the light and warmth and relationship with God. This is where the affection 
and trust and hope come. So when you and I embrace the unknown, it's our hearts and relationship that get us there. It's not our thoughts. They can't get us there. This whole unknowing space, it's like we learn to see in the dark. And we don't reach for thoughts or promises or assurances. What we reach for is connection. This is so much of a better offer for us. And it's an entirely different way of knowing. You know through unknowing. You know through this relationship that guides you through this dark journey. And it's where grace and love and mercy and forgiveness, it's where they come in. And these are the things that are absolutely necessary for survival in an uncertain world. Listen, the only clarity you need is to know how to live in this cloud of unknowing. In that way, we really are saved by faith. And people who live this way, uh, they never stop growing. They're not easily defeated. They're wise. They're compassionate. And frankly, they're just really normal and super fun to be with. They're not all this weird hyper-religion, super churchy, Christian-y stuff. And when you have a faith that insists on standing on the promises all along the way, you are now a subverting trust. And it may even thwart you from reaching out. And it's that unknowing about God that leads us to relate to God. Not think about God, but to interconnect, to attach, to feel God, to, to feel God's presence. It's this cloud of unknowing that, at least for me, it's what actually moved my faith forward, not my thoughts, this inner connection. <laughs>